Guys, right behind us, I have a deal sent to me, and my job today is to figure out if we're gonna make 50 grand or 5,000. Just so you know, it came from a driving for dollars lead. So guys, in this video, me and Zach have to sit down and figure out what our MAO is, our maximum allowable offer, what the ARV is, the accurate ARV. We also have to figure out what kind of repairs that a potential fix and flipper would put into it. And most important, and especially in an ever-changing real estate market we're in right now, we have to figure out what kind of offer to give the seller so we can get the best deal possible, as many options as possible. So guys, let's get into it. That's right, guys. Somebody sent us a driving for dollars lead here, and we're gonna figure out right now what the ARV, what the comps, and what the things are for this, because honestly, we gotta figure out if we're gonna make money on this deal, if we're not, and if this is a deal or not. I know a lot of you guys out here are struggling and just trying to figure out how to find the ARV, the MAO, and the max allowable offer. Honestly, just coming in here, you and me, we could probably figure this out in like five minutes, but mm -hmm. what we wanna do is just shoot a video here and show you exactly the process that we actually go through in our own wholesaling real estate business so you can decide how much we have to offer. Now guys, we don't even own this house right now. We gotta figure out what the offer should be with the seller. I did an initial run of the ARV. I, I just, I used the software. I actually went through listrei.com and I came up and it came up around 290 to 299. So as I told you, comps are always a range. Yeah. So I kind of do the conservative side. You can call it 295. Remember, that's the after repaired value, the ARV, that's what it stands for. So here's the real key. Um, the initial contact with the owner is they wanted like 235, okay? Guys, don't let what the owner says they want for it, their ask price, it's an ask price. Don't let that discourage you. So what we did was we deep dive, we figured out what it needs, and what we wanna do is walk you through our process. So the ARV, it was about 295. The owner was asking for 235. I don't care what they asked for. We have to calculate an offer that makes sense as a wholesaler. And that's the problem. Like we saw some comps here. So this is actually a 2-2, I believe, uh, around a thousand square foot more or less. And there's a lot of these homes out here in Port St. Lucie. And the thing is, it's all over the place, right? Like we're in a changing market right now. So there's houses like this that we have comps, quote unquote, for that sold for like. 340. I think we saw one for 350. Mm -hmm. And then we saw a crazy one for like 180. Just like when you're looking at comps and ARV, you should probably get rid of the outliers. But especially in this current market we're at right now, if something sold for an insane value like six months ago, probably not going to be the best now. Probably take a little discount on it. So how do we come up with that 280, 290, 295-ish ARV, guys? ARV is not perfect. You're not going to be perfect at it it is always gonna be a range. Mm -hmm. But what you have to understand is, I get the 320s, the 310s, maybe in a better market, but we're taking a slight discount off of that because we know this market's a little different right now, especially with the increase in interest rates. But the point is we still gotta figure out if this is a deal or not. So now we have the ARV, now we gotta figure out what the sneaking repairs on this thing are, right? It's a vacant property, so let's figure it out. So I'm here at the property, and remember, the initial offer the seller wanted was like 235. That didn't really excite me as a wholesaler. But honestly, guys, you can't judge a book by its cover. The initial ask price of a seller doesn't matter. What matters is the motivation, okay? And as I dug in, when we worked with our lead on it, they're basically looking to downsize, they're elderly, and they're looking for like assisted living. So it was kind of the perfect fit. And so here's what I'm gonna look at to try to figure out an offer is, I look at my biggest expenses. So on a little house like this, 2-2, it's just a thousand square feet. It's in a wonderful neighborhood, which I'm fine with that. I'm gonna look at my two biggest expenses. And number one's gonna be the roof. And I looked online, they just put this roof on less than two years ago, and it's a beautiful tin metal roof. It has curb appeal, it's beautiful. And this roof right here, believe it or not, saves you twenty to $25,000. Not you, it's gonna save the rehabber. And if the rehabber can save money on it, you're gonna get a higher wholesale fee. Metal roofs, aluminum roofs, most homeowners perception is they like them, they're more attractive, and most people think they'll last 40, 50 years. They will last a long time. They do have fasteners that have to be addressed. Aluminum roofs have a better retail perception value. When I saw the aluminum roof, I was really excited. I want to dig into it. I want to show you the second biggest expense on a little house like this. So I'm walking around the house on the side. If you're gonna notice, this is a wood frame home. Home ownership's so expensive, people don't even care as much anymore. They just get a slight discount. Don't worry about wood frame homes. This, this siding that's rotted, it's gonna be easily replaced. They just cut the board and slide another piece in here. But let me show you the second biggest expense on a home. So now we're on the back side of the house. Guess what the second largest expense on a small 2-2 home is? <laughs> you got it, guys. It's the HAVAC system. And if you look, 
This thing's brand new pad right there. And they've gone through the expense. It's brand new. It works wonderfully. The AC's ice cold. This unit right now, replacing it and doing the whole thing is running around $7,000. So we're talking about a $20,000 roof, $7,000, $27,000 would go to a normal rehab that you would never even see. What we now have to do is figure out what is it gonna take to get this house up to the ARV? And then we can figure out what the target price we can offer. And more importantly, what we can sell it for to a potential fix and flipper. So, so many people, you know, they hear about the AC, they hear about the roof and they get really confused guys. I, I just want to let you guys know if you're like a beginner wholesaler, or you're starting out in this business, don't feel like you have to understand these things a hundred percent completely, but understand the cost of a new roof. It needs a new AC. Just understand it's gonna be five, six, seven thousand dollars in repairs. Now, obviously we have handy dandy charts at freewholesaling.com, which is a free real estate wholesaling course where we'll show you exactly where you need to be on the repairs, but it's just good when you're walking a property with a motivated seller, what things cost, right? The roof, the AC, the repairs, it's the inside of it, right? So just understand that, the siding. So you might ask yourself like, why are there shutters everywhere, right? This property is vacant. Hurricane did potentially come by, a color tropical storm more or less where we're at, but so they shuttered it off and they didn't want to deal with it anymore, right? That's why they usually put them up during hurricane season, mm -hmm. a lot of these vacant houses, a lot of snowbirds do that. Uh, FYI, like if you're driving around, like how they got this lead, the JV partner here, they were driving around town here and they found the shutters and they're like, wait, there's no hurricanes anymore. Why is the shutter up? That's a clear indicative sign that this property is vacant. Now, I know there's not hurricanes probably where you're at living right now, but like just understand little things. Maybe if the windows are boarded up, maybe if the house looks a little ugly, right? Like if you're driving, you could probably see sort of the siding of it looking bad, right? You see some debris on the driveway there. There's just signs looking up where you can find these deals too. Like this deal right here, just sitting there ready to go. So guys, look, it's just a little bit of wood rot here. They attempted to do the repair. There's a water spout coming down here, a handyman. It's an easy fix. You just take it out, paint it, prime it, and you're good to go, guys. I love doing little repairs like this because they're very inexpensive and they have a lot of value to the new homeowner. And then if you see on this side of the house, once again, we got more wood rot. You see these lovely plants growing out of it. Guys, you see plants growing out of the side of the house. You need to get in contact with the homeowner because most homeowners don't do this. The reason they do these repairs is because they were elderly and it was hard for them and they just decided to sell the house. To get a fern growing like this, it's months and months of growing. Guys, this piece out, just a simple two by four, primed and paint and it'll be fine to go. Okay guys, and this right here I'm putting my foot on is just a septic tank. So this is where all the fun stuff goes. To be honest with you, it's clear. The bolts are clean. They're stainless steel. This thing's been serviced well. I have no issues with the septic and I'll talk to the owner about it. But guys, all these things I'm talking about that me and Zach have gone over, these are costs that you don't see. And everything I've gone over would probably add up to be about $25,000, $30,000. Why I'm excited about this deal is because I don't have to spend any any of that money doing it. What we need to do is go on the inside and figure out what the rehab needs and figure out what we can offer the homeowner. But I'm excited because I'm not spending 30K in what I call structural repairs. It's important you know the difference between cosmetic and structural repairs. Structural repairs, it's never seen by the end user. So sometimes you can spend like 30 or $50,000 and then you have to do the cosmetic part. Everybody wants the cosmetic, nobody wants to deal with the structural. We don't have structural issues on the house, so I know I can make a deal that's going to make sense on it. Understand the difference between cosmetic and structural. And if you can focus on cosmetic, you can make a heck of a lot more on these properties. So we got inside the house. We got permission. It's vacant. So it's going to be a little bit darker. I apologize up front. But remember, they have hurricane shutters up. So I can't take them down. This is how it was found for driving for dollars because most people take them down after a type of storm, these stayed up. And that led to our conversation with the seller. But if you look around, actually it smells pretty clean. The power's not on right now, but you can tell they've been running the AC, it's brand new. And we have some funky wallpaper. Now it's a 70s designed wallpaper. Obviously homeowners aren't a big fan of this anymore. Wallpaper is a pain in the butt, but it is fixable. So you get a handyman or like paint drywall type of guy and basically get to scrape it off, sand it, recoat it, whatever they need to do. But these are easy fixes. And the reason I'm telling you is because it's going to give you a better perceived value when you sell it to your fix and flipper because they want to get in and spend cosmetic. So we've already talked about structural. Now we're talking about cosmetic. I love wallpaper, getting rid of it. I love being able to paint. It's clean. So guys, if you notice on the flooring, it's relatively new. I mean, it's not the best, but it's in good shape. So why waste money here? All these cosmetic stuff adds up. 
Uh, so the less the repairs, the real repairs, the better the deal you're gonna get because when you sell it to a fix and flipper, they can save tons of money doing it. We're at the kitchen and this is where most of the money is usually spent on any type of rehabber. Remember, we're wholesalers, but we have to understand what our fix and flips, AKA our cash buyers need. This is an older type of home in Florida. You guys can relate across the country, but this is what we call a galley style kitchen. And what I kind of like about these, they're, they're cookie cut and play. Normally these kitchens are pretty trashed and you just pull them out and a kitchen like this with appliances, everything, I can probably get out between five and $7,000. But here's the really good news on this deal, guys. I, I got a flashlight, I've got no power. These cabinets, these appliances, and eh, a little touch and go. Go. But remember, I can't get like fancy stainless steel appliance because it's not going to fit this property. So honestly, I would get a detail in here, clean it up, clean the grout lines. A little tip, guys, never open the fridge until the power is on. And honestly, be prepared because if there's spoiled food, especially milk, meats or anything like that, it's not pleasant. I've been surprised too many times. Get the handyman to open that. Don't do it yourself. And if it's bad, take the doors off, take it to the dump, whatever you need to do. But like right here, I would just clean this up. You can't overspend the kitchen in these properties. Right now we're at wallpaper, paint, maybe a new stove, but I'd probably put a used stove in here, about 200 bucks. Guys, we're at very, very minimal repairs. So I'm in the master bathroom. So there's two bathrooms here. I'll save you the, the spare you expense on the other one. The other one's just fine. There's nothing wrong with it. A little outdated, but just clean it up. So in the master bathroom here, once again, I have wallpaper on this wall, which we're gonna do the same thing we do in the other room. What I do is I walk around the wall, and if you're not familiar, just kick the bottom of the shower and see if the wall flexes. So the wall's nice and contained, it's dry. It's a little bit of an ugly color, but once again, other than wallpaper and a deep clean, guys, we're spending no money on the kitchen, we're spending very little money on the baths. Honestly, we're just gonna kind of come in and do what I call a lipstick. We're gonna do a paint. We're gonna do a deep clean. And this is gonna be a very minimal budget whoever winds up rehabbing it. The good news to you as a wholesaler, you can sell that vision because if a fix and flipper can come in here and spend Instead of spending 30, 40 grand, they just spend five or 10 grand. You can charge more for your wholesale deals, bigger assignment deals. Guys, just understanding how these costs for cosmetics versus structural work can make you a ton of money as a wholesaler. And this is the other side of the room. This is the master. This whole room could probably be done for about 800 bucks. So we're gonna put this under contract. How much would the repairs you think? I think it's like 10 to 15, right? I, honestly, I, I gotta tell you five to seven tops. It, it's a light flooring, wallpaper, removal and a lot of paint and maybe a used appliance and a deep detail. So honestly, it winds up being some painting, remove the wallpaper, some dry rot repairs on the outside, some wooding, and really a deep clean and a used appliance. Honestly, five to seven, and I think we're being generous at that number. These are some of my favorite deals because there's so much potential because all the repairs are going to make it look beautiful as opposed to structural. So if we have an ARV around 290, let's just say 10K in repairs to be nice. We multiply that by 83%. That's coming in MAO between 230, 232. Mm -hmm. So basically if they want, how much do they want for this? They're asking 235. So that's basically pretty much our MAO. So all we really gotta do is negotiate with them, which I mean, obviously we have our Ninja acquisitions teams and we have our sales tactics, we can close them. But really, if you look at this with a wholesaling perspective, any dollar amount really under 232 is gonna be profit for us. So if we get this thing under contract, I'm hoping for 200 and that'll give us about 32K in profit. That's really what we're looking at. So like, we're kind of doing this video. It's like, is this a deal or no deal? If we can get it under 230, yes, it's a deal. If I got it for 225, five, seven, eight K in profit, that's okay for a wholesale deal. Really, we wanna get over 200. If I'm gonna go negotiate with this person, I'm probably gonna be at like 190, 180. I'm gonna do the good cop, bad cop, mm -hmm. kind of make fun of you saying Sub you're the bad guy. Yeah. And then really trying to negotiate 200. That's probably what we're looking at on this thing because this is a decent house. I hope you understand like in this market, cheap real estate still sells really fast. If you look at your median home price, so the median home price here in Port St. Lucie is still like 350, even 400. Almost four and a quarter. And so like you're looking at this property and the is 280, this is really cheap. Now, so anything under 300 will be a piece of cake for yeah. uh, an, an end user to buy or a fix and flipper to retail for 
for that price. If a cash buyer or like a regular buyer is gonna buy a regular property with a mortgage, if their regular property they're gonna buy for 350 or 360 and unfortunately mortgage rates increase, which they are and they're gonna keep doing, that means I gotta buy a house for 250, 260, mm -hmm. 270. They're still going to buy, right? Yeah. So it, it's perfect guys. Cause remember if the three or four Ds happen, people are gonna buy real estate and people are gonna sell the property. Death, dumb decisions, debt and divorce. So if there's gonna be debt, dumb decisions, death and divorce, there's gonna be people wanting to sell real estate. So there's always gonna be stuff in this market. I just wanna show you guys like these properties are out here. Anybody literally in my market, anywhere in the entire country probably could have virtually drove for dollars and found this thing. The question is why didn't you pick this up? So we're kind of doing the math here. I say this is a deal because I mean, honestly, we've never found a house, especially built in like the 80s or 70s, that's 100% perfect. But really, I don't think this is bad. So let's go kind of talk to the seller and try and get the best deal possible. Let's do it. So overall guys, I would say this is the deal because we're really close. If somebody's first initial asking price is our MAO, I know we get this thing sold easily. pretty quick, e easily. We're gonna try to go for like 190, I'm 185. Go 200. Or, or we're gonna try, yeah, 185, 190. We're gonna see what we're gonna do. So guys, this is Zach Ginn signing out. Rick Ginn signing out. Guys, these deals are everywhere. I hope you understand a little more how we kind of look at the process. I can tell you right now, it was 100% easier to have eyes on the property, do repair costs. And the biggest reason why we have our ARV a little higher than probably we should have is because this is a vacant house. The most important part about a vacant house is if I get this property locked up, I'm throwing a lockbox on this thing and I'm probably gonna bring 15 or 20 cash buyers through and I'm gonna bid it up for the highest price exactly. possible. Because we have the buyers, we're ready to go and that's it. Okay, so I'm sweating profusely. It's hot, <laughs> Zach, let's go. Let's try to get this deal done. Make sure you guys hit that like button, subscribe, and we'll see you guys soon. See you guys.